you're building your home theater, you've purchased your audio video receiver, you've got all your speakers and cables ready to go, and you unbox your AVR, look at the back and see all these connections, and you ask yourself, where in the world do all of these connections go, and how do I get this thing put together? That's exactly what I'm gonna teach you in this video. We're gonna walk through just some basics of how to connect an audio video receiver to your speakers and your components. So here we are looking at the rear of the Pioneer VSX LX505 AVR. Now the first thing I want you to think about, your AVR is going to be the hub of your entire system. All of your digital components, all of your video components are going to be plugged into the AVR and then the sound is going to come out of that to your speakers and the video is going to come out of this AVR to your TV or your projector. So first let's talk about connecting your components. Most components nowadays utilize HDMI and you can see we've got six different HDMI inputs up here and it says input right here, HDMI in. And then over here we've got two HDMI outs. So HDMI allows us to send audio as well as video from our device to our AVR. So if you have a 4K player and it has HDMI, we're going to utilize this number one, it says BD, which is Blu-ray disc or DVD, and you're going to plug the back of your HDMI cable into that device, and then we'll simply connect it right here. Now most AVRs are labeled on the back, so you can see we've got HDMI 1 is BD DVD, HDMI 2 is game, HDMI 3 is cable satellite, HDMI 4 is streaming box, and then you also have an unassigned 5 and 6. So in my system, I do have a PS5, but that does not mean that I have to connect it to game. I could connect it to satellite cable if I want to. That's totally fine. The only thing you want to make sure is that if you're connecting a current gaming console and you're trying to utilize 4K 120 hertz, you may need to utilize certain HDMI inputs that take advantage of that HDMI 2.1. So in my setup, I do have a PS5, so I would connect the HDMI to that. I don't have a cable satellite. My streaming box would be my 4K Apple TV. So you'd connect all of your video devices to the AVR using one of those six inputs. Now a lot of AVRs will allow you to rename the input. So let's say if this was my PS5 inside the AVR, I could rename it instead of BD DVD, I could rename it to say PS5. So once you have all of your HDMI sources connected here to the inputs, you're going to now need to get that video signal to your TV or your projector. So over here you'll see HDMI out, so we've got two of them. One has ARC and eARC, and the other one does not. If you're connecting to a TV that has ARC, you're going to want to use this connection right here. And the reason being is that you can set your TV to send audio from the TV into your unit and then out of this AVR to your speakers. And that's gonna allow you to get better sound than the TV speakers built in. Now, if you had a secondary TV that you want to send that same signal to, we could send that out to zone two. I personally have never had a need for zone two. Over the far right, you'll see a connection for network. Now, this allows us to connect the AVR to our internet so that we can get updates from the manufacturer. So if you want to hardwire it, you would take something like a 5E CAT cable or maybe a CAT6 cable, plug that in there, and then connect that to your router or if you have a network hub. Now, if you're not able to connect via Ethernet, most modern day AVRs do allow you to connect via your Wi-Fi. And so you can see we've got antennas up here. So inside the AVR, you would go into the settings, connect to your network, and then you could download firmware updates via wirelessly. If you have a component that does not utilize HDMI, you may want to use one of these digital audio inputs over here on the left. So up top, we have a digital coax. And then right below that, we have a digital optical, or some people refer to it as a toss link connection. So let's say we had a CD player and it does have a digital coax. We could connect the RCA cable to that. And then the other side would connect directly to the CD player. Some CD players come with both of these options and some of them only come with one or the other. So let's say you wanted to connect using an optical, 
it looks something like this and it only can go one way you can see it's rounded on one side and then square on other three sides so we'll just align that here and you'll push it in until you hear it snap now you'll notice when i remove this there's a little door right here so that door opens up as you push in so don't worry about that just slide it right in there and just make sure that it snaps to know that it's secure. Most AVRs include what we call legacy connections. So these are component video, composite video, and then we've got our standard red and white, which is our audio cable inputs. So let's say you have an older Blu-ray player or DVD player that you want to connect to the AVR, but it does not have HDMI connections. So you'll want to use a component video cable like this. Now these are basically the same identical cable, they're just color coded to make sure that you match them up on the AVR as well as the back of your DVD player or your Blu-ray player. So we're simply going to connect the red, the blue, and the green RCA cable like that. And then on the back of our DVD player or Blu-ray player, we're going to do the same thing with that and it should be color coded as well. So that gets the video from the DVD player or Blu-ray player into the AVR, but now we also have to connect the audio. So for that, we're gonna use a standard RCA with a red and white. And down here, you can see there's an option for DVD, BD. So we're going to plug that in and they're color coded. So we'll do right for red channel and left for the L channel. So now we have the audio as well as the video coming from our Blu-ray player or DVD player into our AV receiver. Now, of course, there's other connections down here in case you have a phonograph or a turntable. You can see that here, CD player, streaming box. Again, these are legacy formats that you may need to utilize to get your components connected to your AVR. But if your video component does have HDMI, I highly recommend using that because that's going to allow you to have the most bandwidth. A lot of these connections here are limited to lower resolution audio as well as video. So now that you've got all of your HDMI sources connected to the inputs, you've got one HDMI going out to your TV or projector, and you've got any legacy components connected over here. Now we need to connect our AVR to our speakers. So this section right here in the middle, this is all of our speaker terminals. This allows us to connect each one of our speakers to the AVR so that it can send sound from the AVR to each speaker accordingly. So moving from left to right, we've got our front right, our front left, center channel, surround right, surround left, height right, height left, and then either a surround back or we could use that as a height too, which is the way that we're going to use it in my connection here. And then over on the far right, we have a connection for a pair of zone two speakers. This would be utilized maybe if you've got a pair of speakers on your back patio or in your garage that you want to be able to send audio to so you can listen to music. So there's two ways to connect your speaker wires to your AVR. Number one would be to take your bare wire, strip it with some wire strippers or maybe a knife. I always twist this really tight and then you're going to simply unscrew this and then you're going to slide the wire into this little slot like this and then once you get it all the way in there just tighten it down real tight now take your time with this because the last thing you want is a piece of that copper maybe one of those little copper strands to be outside and touching the back of this AVR or even touching another wire because you could end up with a short so this is not my preferred method but if you were to use bare wire you would simply do that, do the same thing with this one, and then connect your front left, center channel, surrounds, and so forth. But I'm going to show you a better way. So I am a big proponent of what they call banana plugs. Banana plugs are super, super simple. So these are made by Sewell. They're not very expensive. And the way these work is I'm going to unscrew this. And here what you can see is... We simply feed the wire up through the middle of this and then fold the top down just like that and then screw this cap on. So what this allows us to do 
when we're making our connections, it makes it really clean, it makes it easy. But check this out. We simply just slide this in, slide that in, and you can see these are really snug. They're not going to fall out of the AVR and they make a really clean presentation on the back and it just makes it quicker to install. Now in no way, shape or form do banana plugs enhance the audio sound quality of your AVR and your system, but they do make it super convenient and they're really, really great to utilize, especially when you've got a lot of connections that you need to make on the back of your AVR. Now I'll post links to the Sewell as well as some other brands that I recommend. They're super affordable and they really tidy up your system. I'll have links for it down in the description below. So once you have it connected on the AVR, of course, on the other end, you're going to connect that to the corresponding speaker. In this case, this would be connected to my front right speaker. Then you'll go down the line and you'll end up connecting another set of speaker cables to the second one. That's going to be your front left speaker. And you'll connect the other end of that to that corresponding speaker. So I love banana plugs. I definitely think that these are super, super convenient and they just really keep that back clean and tidy. This Pioneer AVR is rated at 120 watts per channel, but only with two channels driven. What that means is if we only had two speakers connected, front left and front right, those two channels, if that was all that was connected to this AVR, we'd be able to send 120 watts to each speaker. However, as you can see, we've got nine speakers connected to this AVR. We've got five bed layer speakers, front right, front left, center, as well as surround right and surround left, but we also have four Dolby Atmos speakers, front left and right and rear left and right. So the more speakers that we have connected to a single AVR, the lower that wattage per speaker is going to be. So effectively, we may be down to like 55 watts per speaker if we have all of these speakers being driven by the internal amplification of the AVR. So at some point in your journey, you may want to add an external amplifier. And the question I always get is, can I offload even some of the amplification from the AVR so that we would get more amplification to the remaining speakers? And the answer is yes. So let's say you bought a five channel amplifier that's maybe 200 watts by five. What we would want to do is disconnect the five bed layer speakers. So front, left, and right, the center, and your two surrounds. Just like that. So now we have the AVR's internal amplification only powering these four Dolby Atmos speakers. So each one of those speakers is going to get more power to them as opposed to having all nine speakers connected. So to connect that external amplifier, we'll pull these wires off to the side a little bit. You can see down here, we've got pre-outs for every single channel that you want to amplify. So in this case, we want to amplify these five channels here. So you're going to need an RCA cable for each of those channels, just a single cable for the front left speaker, a single cable for the front right, a single cable for the center, a single for the surround left, and a single for the surround right. So you would connect a single RCA to the front left. The other end of that RCA is going to get connected to one of those five inputs on your amplifier. So let's think of it in terms of signal flow. We've got our HDMI inputs connected in here. So let's say we're using our Blu-ray player. So we've got HDMI one selected, sound is coming into here. We're powering these four Atmos speakers with the internal amplification. And now we need to send the signal of each one of those five speakers that we're not powering right here to our amplifier. So we're gonna come out of your front left, plug into the back of that amplifier, and then out of that amplifier to your speakers. So the best option is to connect these one at a time come out of here into amplifier, out of amplifier with your speaker wire to that particular speaker, and then continue on to the remaining four channels, your front right, your center channel, your surround right, as well as your surround left. 
So you can do this with a three channel, a five channel, seven channel. You can use an external amplifier to power all of these, but again, you would just disconnect whatever channels you don't want the internal amplifier to handle and then connect that to that amplifier. Now connecting subwoofers is really easy. So down here, you're going to utilize these pre-outs right here. The reason why we're using a pre-out instead of a speaker wire here is because the subwoofers typically have an internal amplifier that's gonna power that subwoofer. So all we need to do is get an unpowered signal from here to the subwoofer, and then the subwoofer will handle all the amplification for it. Now, if you've got one subwoofer, you're gonna connect it to this subwoofer one using an RCA cable just like this. And if on the back of your subwoofer, it has an LFE input, you can plug in the other end directly into that. If it doesn't, you may want to use a Y splitter like this, it just has a female end here. And then you'll plug this into the left and right channel on the back of your subwoofer amplifier. Now, depending on your AVR, you may have one or two subwoofer pre-outs. If you have two subwoofers, but you only have one of these sub outs, that's a really simple fix. Just pick up a little Y splitter like this, plug it into your sub one, and you can see that now splits that signal into two different paths. So then we take the RCA for one subwoofer and connect it to one of them here, and then take another RCA, connect that to your second subwoofer, just like that. So as you can see, connecting all of your components and your speakers to an AVR really isn't that difficult. Now in a future video, I'll be taking you through Direct Live, the auto correction software in the 505 and show you how to set that up as well as calibrate your system so that you'll get the best performance out of your new AVR. Now this video is part of a bigger series on home theater basics. So if you're interested in additional videos, you can check those out right here. And as always, you guys be blessed and we will catch you in the next video.